I think we had mental health hospitals in the past. Yes, we did. And, uh, and forgive my ignorance on this, I'm not sure why they, they went away. Um, I know that there supposedly was a lot of abuse that took place. Um, I don't think that would be something I'd be against. What I would be against if, is if it's going to raise a lot of taxes and hurt people in that way. Um, but other than that, yes, there has to be something for the mentally ill. Um, so I, I would support the hospitals. As I said, I, maybe someone else knows better than I do why they were done away with years ago. But as I, as I said, what I've heard is that there was a lot of abuse to the patients, that they weren't really getting care. And if they were getting care, I can, that would definitely be the way to go. Mr. Feltus. Well, I think you touched on a couple of things. First of all, there's a secure psychiatric unit at the, the state prison. Uh, that needs to be shut down. We need to figure out a different way to deal with uh, that situation. There are abuses there. Um, they've been publicized to a large degree. Uh, we need to work on that. Uh, I think Governor Sununu uh, supports that. Certainly, uh, it's something that is gaining bipartisan traction. Second, there is a state hospital. Uh, fortunately, not a lot of people are there. I don't think institutionalizing people is the way to go. Um, and all the research indicates it's not the case. Having people live in their community, inclusive lives in their community with services, including mobile crisis teams, which we tried to add more to the budget. A Republican colleagues said no. The sort of community treatment teams, in addition to the ones that we have, a Republican colleagues said no. A mental health rate increase so that we can attract and retain the workforce to get the job done, our Republican colleagues said no. We need to be able to treat this crisis the way that everybody in all the research says. And you know what, down in New Jersey, they shut down all their hospitals. Why? Because they have active community-based programs, including a children's system of care for behavioral health to help our children so that our children don't get in that pathway uh, to get justice involved. If we're gonna be serious about this, the cost-effective way, the cost-effective way, cost money up front, cost-effective way is to invest in upfront, upstream prevention to make sure that we deal with this, uh, nip it in the bud, and really actually help our people. We got, uh, last point on this, we got, last Friday, I looked at the report last Friday, 50 people sitting in emergency rooms around the state. 50 people sitting in a non-therapeutic setting waiting to get appropriate mental health care, sitting in emergency rooms, some of them on cots in hallways of emergency rooms. I visited Concord Hospital there are people on cots, some of them have been there over a month. That's the condition of our mental health system in the state of New Hampshire. It needs to change. So I'm going to revise the question for Mr. Bolinsky as an executive council candidate. Uh, what would you consider in terms of a contract for providers for acute mental health beds or services? What would be your considerations for that? So the kind of thing that would come before the council and that would make good sense is to recognize that we have both a front door and a back door problem with the state hospital. So everyone thinks that the state hospital isn't large enough and in part that's what causes the ER backups. The other part of the problem is that once people are stabilized at the state hospital, there are very few places for them to go. So we can't transition them out of the state hospital. So the kind of contracting that I would look at would be to restore the community mental health system that New Hampshire was known for in the 1980s under Donald Shumway. We had a nation leading system of community mental health programs and we dismantled it because we consider the cost of everything and the value of nothing. That would have been incredibly important to deal with the substance abuse crisis, to deal with things like um, uh, violence in schools, violence in our communities, and we took it apart because we stopped investing in it. There's a time when you need to invest in important services because in the long run, it's the right thing to do and it saves you money. Thank you. And let's come back to Mr. Carson.